wop more like wet ass poopy pants. <laughs> That was a horrible joke. That was really bad. Hey cuties and welcome back to my channel for another video. If you want to join the cuties fam, all you gotta do is hit that subscribe button, the like button, and the little bell icon to get notified when I make new videos. All my socials will be linked down below, including my Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Cameo, Patreon, Discord, my podcast. If you want to support me in any way that you can, that'll all be linked down below. Do me a favor right now and double check that you're subscribed to me and that you have the post notifications on because a lot of people have been telling me that YouTube has been randomly unsubscribing them to me. So just double check that that's all good to go. I would really appreciate that. Like every video of mine, I want to give a big shout out to every single one of my patrons. You guys keep this channel running because I have a feeling a lot of my upcoming videos are going to get demonetized, but stay tuned for those. If you guys want to support me, you can join my Patreon down below. In my next video, I'm going to go a little bit more in depth as to why I've been a bit MIA the last week or so. But basically, long story short, I had a few posts on Instagram and TikTok go viral and the amount of hate and threats got so bad to the point where I had to file police reports. And yeah, it was just a whole stressful, scary time. But this is a very, very great segue into the sponsor of this video. The sponsor of today's video is Surfshark VPN. Now, if you know what a VPN is, this has been absolutely key for me protecting my information online, especially because recently a lot of people were trying to dox me, harass me, get my location. And this was a great way to protect all of my information online. If you've been thinking about getting a VPN, this is the perfect time to get one. This deal is literally one of the best I've seen Right now, if you go to surfshark.deals slash Christina Maoni, you can get a limited time offer of 83% off a two-year plan and three extra months free. This would make your subscription only $2.21 per month. So you can browse securely on all your devices. Personally, my favorite features of Surfshark are the fact that I can hide my IP address. This has been really important with me in protecting my location. And on top of this, you can actually change locations, which is so key because I'm from Canada and I like watching American Netflix. And so all I have to do is go to my VPN, change my location to the United States, and I can watch all the American TV shows I want. Let's say you're in America and you want a good cry going and you wanna watch The Notebook. The Notebook isn't on American Netflix. You just go to your VPN, you switch your location to Canada, boom, Netflix has The Notebook. And also you can use this VPN on unlimited devices, which usually on other VPN services, you have to pay more for that. To claim this amazing deal, go to surfshark.deals slash Christina Mayoni for more information. All of those will be linked in the description as well. Okay, now let's get into the video. So it was a very good three months where I forgot that Caitlyn Bennett existed until you guys roped me back in. She did not even cross my mind. I was so much happier. My skin was glowing. My hair was shiny. And now y'all brought me back into this pile of garbage, okay? I got a million requests for another video on Caitlyn Bennett. I think specifically because she met Marjorie Taylor Greene. Did I say her name right that time? Because I said it wrong the entire last video I did on her. But specifically, it was this one tweet she put out recently. So basically, it's Caitlyn like on the beach and she's sitting there looking like a burnt ass lobster. Uh, and the caption reads, yeah, I love my WAP. White American privilege. WAP? More like wet ass poopy pants. <laughs> That was a horrible joke. That was really bad. Thank you for finally admitting it. Thank you for finally confirming for us that you are a literal Nazi. <laughs> like, she's really like white pride. <laughs> like, like, I mean, obviously I know she's making a joke here and then be like, just out here enjoying my white privilege. Apparently that privilege does not extend to sun exposure because you look like you're getting burnt. Like, rub some SPF on that. You won't get sun damage and wrinkles and possibly melanoma, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's take a look at what she's been- what she's been feeling. <laughs> what 
what vibe she's been playing on. What are the vibes on YouTube, man? So since we last left off, I mean, she did make a video where she's like, I love Biden. I'm not even gonna watch it though, because I know she's joking. She has like a picture of Joe Biden in her background. Uh, okay, so we're gonna watch this video of her meeting uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, which I already did a video on. If you wanna know who this lady is, I'll link it somewhere up here, okay? So you can go watch that video if you don't know who she is, but we're gonna take a look at Caitlin meeting Marjorie Taylor Greene. We're here with Marjorie Taylor Greene. You need no introduction. You're awesome, you're a fighter, you're so strong. A lot of people like to say you're my mom, so. <laughs> That's okay with I'll me. I'll take that. You're a very good, solid, conservative, <laughs> gun-loving, Second Amendment supporting young lady, so that's- You heard it here. Marjorie is my mom. I don't think that's something to be proud of. If someone told me Marjorie Taylor Greene was my mom, I would late-term abort myself. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. I'm just cracking myself up today. <laughs> I would, per I mean, I'm not saying anyone else should do that. I'm saying personally, as like a personal decision, if Marjorie Taylor Greene was my mother, I would late term abort myself <laughs> out a window. <laughs> I would yeet myself out a window. Not, not something to brag about. So, okay. Ever since you won your election back in Georgia, the media has just loved to attack you. And it seems as if because they don't have Trump to go after, you are their new target. How do you handle it so well? Well, the the way I handle it is I didn't... Wait, do you think like Caitlyn <laughs> at home in the mirror was like practicing these questions? Like she's like simping over Marjorie. She was like, yes, queen, go off. The wildfires in California really were caused by Jewish space lasers. She kept getting the questions wrong in the mirror. She was like, fuck, you can't, you can't embarrass yourself in front of MTG. She was in front of the mirror. She was in front of the mirror practicing me like, if you shit yourself in front of Marjorie Taylor Greene, I will never forgive you. Never. She's like trying so hard not to shit herself right now. Like this is like the biggest moment of Caitlyn's life. I didn't run for the media. I ran for the people. And my saying during my campaign, and I continue to say it, is people over politicians. As a matter of fact, that's so important to me. Um, we have that on my wall uh, in my office in Washington, D.C. And I can't wait for Nancy Pelosi to stop running. You know what she also has on her wall outside of her office in D.C.? There are only two genders. A sign that says there are only two genders. People over politicians. You literally do not care about people. At least not any person who is anything other than white, cis, heterosexual. You don't care. You don't care about trans people. Those are people. People over politicians. But you don't care about the trans people. Or the gay people. Or the black people. Or the Muslim people or the immigrants, they're not people to you. They're not, they're not human beings with intrinsic value. You literally said that people swearing in to Congress on the Quran was an Islamic invasion into the government. You're sick in the head. And Caitlin is literally sitting here like simping over you. It makes me sick. But the media, we, we know exactly who they are. We saw it with President Trump over, over the past four years. The most of the mainstream media is Democrats. Um, they, they want, they support Democrats. They want these progressive policies in place. And they use their powerful platform to push these policies. And so when someone who's conservative like me, uh, and, and I truly love America and my policies are America first, just like President Trump, and I support him completely, and I can't wait for him to speak tomorrow, um, they, they want to tear me down and smear me and create a narrative that they can sell to the public. And how I handle it is that's not who I am. And all of my family and friends are constantly appalled at their attacks, and so are my constituents. And so here's the great news. You don't worry about bullying. You don't let them. I love when they're like, oh, then the media is trying to create a narrative that's just not true. Girl, we literally saw you chase down a survivor of a school shooting and call him a coward. We literally saw you call Muslim people in Congress an Islamic invasion. Like, how do you spin that in a, in a, in a good way? Tell me. Tell me now. How do you spin putting a sign that says there's only two genders, trust the science, when first of all, science ain't on your side. It's not on your side at all. And second of all, that sign was across the hall from a congresswoman who had a trans daughter. Third of all, you literally said 
that the California wildfires were caused by Jewish space lasers, and you've been spreading QAnon conspiracy theories. Tell me where the media, if these things came from you, how the media is spinning that in a bad way. But anyways, I digress. I, my story is kind of similar to yours because right now I get chased out of college campuses. They don't want me in these public spaces. They chased you and voted you out of your committee. And I know in your press statements you say, well, now I have more time to focus on the people back in Georgia. Are you still of that mindset? Are you regretting that you aren't on that committee at all? Are you still happy with who you are and where you're going? Marjorie's smile there was like, <laughs> of course you brought this up. <laughs> of course. Oh, listen, that was a that was a great big gift yeah. from from the Democrats and 11 of my very weak Republican colleagues. Uh, I was 10 that voted again for impeachment on Trump. It was 11 that voted to kick me off. And most of those people have been censured in their own districts and states. So I think they're hearing from people uh, exactly the message they need to hear. No, being being removed from committees right now was the best thing that could have happened to me. By removing me from committees, I have been freed up of having to listen to their woke, progressive, ridiculous, socialist, Democrat ideas and trying to give Democrats some more time before they vote for horrible things like the Equality Act. Horrible things like the Equality Act. The motherfucking Equality Act. Tell me you're a bigot without telling me you're a bigot. Oh my god, this is just sad. That was just a long-winded response to say that I'm incredibly butthurt that they kicked me off the committee and I'm trying to cushion the blow. I'm trying to stop the tears at night by saying, this was actually a really good, this was a gift for me. This was actually really good for me. The establishment GOP, they hate you. They hate you. Why are they so threatened by your existence? Well, the the establishment. So we t and we can say the swamp, right? So it's the political pundits. It's the Beltway. It's uh, the the consultants that that deem themselves so much more intelligent and, and wise, uh, and they know better than the people, right? Well, their problem is is they've been living in a little bubble, a political bubble, where they've only been looking at themselves and talking to each other. They are so clueless about what real people think, what real people want, and how real people feel they have to constantly poll see the problem is it's like sometimes these republicans go so far right that they almost turn left like you're so close to the point they're like this close we're like yes you can't trust the politicians they're not looking out for our best interests yes destroy the establishment yes and they're like yes and trump will lead the way and we're like no he's a fascist <laughs> it's like you're this close you're so close to class consciousness you it's like Republicans literally stare the point right in the face and completely miss. Like they're staring, like the, the point is right there. They're like looking at it and then they completely dodge it. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to help them. <laughs> my impeach Biden. But you were one that says end a Yes. What does ending a specifically mean to you? Where where do we go with it? We completely end a It's the worst evil uh, committed in our day. She really said that was the worst thing. What about what y'all are doing at the ICE detention centers? I don't know, that seems pretty bad. Those are like fully grown clumps of cells. Um, so why don't you focus on those before you focus on unborn fetuses and embryos? Let's prioritize stopping childhood hunger in America before we prioritize something that doesn't even have a heartbeat or like brain function, I guess, depending on what week you get it done at. Because what is actually disgusting is letting the government regulate a woman's body. Like, you have every right to think it's wrong. That's totally your own prerogative or thought process. But you don't have the right to dictate what a woman does with her body. And you know what? More than that, the government doesn't have a right to dictate what a woman does with her body. Period. Body autonomy is one of the most important things in personal freedoms. And if you start removing even little bits of that, that is setting an incredibly dangerous precedent. One of the amendments I was able to introduce on the Rules Committee, see they kicked me off, but guess what? I was on the Rules Committee yesterday. Um, I introduced an amendment to stop all federal funding of that bill uh, to go towards uh, Democrats rejected it, of course, because they reject everybody's, any Republicans amendment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, we need to end it. We need to end it. Over 62 million people have been murdered. They've been canceled. 
and they want to cancel uh, innocent lives in the womb. They want to cancel gender, male and female. They want to cancel uh, conservative Americans that believe in those very real fundamental things of life. <laughs> they want to cancel those real conservative Americans who, who believe in the fundamentals of life. Like what? Like white supremacy? Like misogyny? Like traditional gender roles? Like closed borders? And way too many guns? Well, no wonder you're getting canceled. I'm glad to hear you say that. Okay, the last question, because I don't want to take up any more of your time. Speaking of labels, and they love to call you a conspiracy theorist, all of this, all of the garbage, right? right. Even though they believe in the Russia collusion. That's a big conspiracy theory, isn't right. it? Not? Yep. Yeah, okay. A lot of conservatives are having trouble keeping their jobs. We talked about being canceled and keeping their social media. They're getting banned everywhere, like President Trump. There's a lot of people who, like me and you, are feeling scared to speak up. If you have any advice to Christians, conservatives, Trump supporters to speak up, what would you say to them? When has Caitlyn Bennett ever been afraid of speaking up? Really, really. Tell me one time she didn't speak her fucking mind on an opinion she had no business speaking on. It's like you see conservatives being like, we are the silent majority. And then it's just that Taylor Swift song that's like, I've never heard silence quite this loud. <laughs> like literally, like silent majority who? Silent majority where? When have y'all ever been silent? You're the loudest mother I've ever seen in my entire life. Like I've never seen people be so loud and wrong. It, they just say things with their whole chest. They're literally like, yes, I'm a bigot and proud. Like, okay, like, do you want a bigot cookie? I don't, why are you like bragging about this? It's weird, okay? When have y'all ever been silent? Never. Advice to Christians, conservatives, Trump supporters to speak up, what would you say to them? I would say that we are possibly living in the last days of having free speech. And if anyone values that, and if you're a Christian... Like, these people really don't understand, like, what free speech means. You have freedom of speech, but that doesn't mean that you're free of consequence. Like, you're allowed to say whatever the fuck you want. That doesn't mean that you're not going to face consequences for those words that you spew. Like, I never get this. It's like, you have freedom of speech. You can literally say whatever the hell you want, but... People are not going to want to employ you when you're spreading anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. You know what I mean? Especially if those people are Jewish. Like, come on now. On behalf of my audience, I just want to say so many people love you, Marjorie, because you are real. You are a real American. You're not an elitist out there. And I just want to say on behalf of them, we love you. We truly do. You represent us. Just like we see Donald Trump, that's what we see. We see ourselves in you and Donald Trump, and that's why we love you so much. So can I hug you? <laughs> You're awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Oh, and let me just point out that literally everyone in the background is wearing masks and these two are not wearing masks. Like, I really hope they got tested before this, but I, honestly, I highly doubt it. Over 400,000 people have died and it's just so fucking disrespectful. Shit just makes me so angry. Oh my gosh, she literally just posted a video as I was filming this. It's called Dems Get Mad That I Cook For My Husband. She's definitely trying to copy the whole issue that Candace Owens had where she like made a sandwich for her husband while pregnant and like it went viral or whatever because people were like, you're serving your husband while pregnant, like shouldn't he be making you a sandwich? Like who cares? Like who actually keeps up with Candace Owen? She's so fucking boring. But like literally, is that not what we were all told growing up? Like get in the kitchen and make me a sandwich. You will not catch me dead ever making a man a sandwich. Thank you very much. Maybe one day I will make them something else but you will not catch me dead ever making a sandwich because of how many comments I got like that. It's not like the left wing is like, you cannot cook for a man. It's the idea that to be worthy as a woman, you first of all, don't have to be with someone and you don't have to be um, like subservient to them or to serve them in a way that it's like mandatory that you like cook and clean and do housework. That should be like a shared job between partners. She even puts way too much emphasis in this video. Um, I'm not gonna show it all just because uh, it's like 11 minutes long and it's, I'm bored already, but she puts such a big emphasis on, see, this is what I have. I have a husband who loves me and I'm going to do things for him. And that makes me a worthy, like fulfilled housewife. And it's like, that's totally cool. If you feel fulfilled doing that, that's wonderful. But that's not what you're doing. You're also saying that it's a woman's duty to do these things. She said it many times that like, you need to, you know, serve your husband and be a good wife and bear children. And she believes in these very strict 
ideas or what a man and woman need to look like in a relationship. And I just think that's incredibly regressive. Like we fought so hard to be our own individuals and to show people that we are human beings with equal value. If you feel fulfilled doing those things and that genuinely makes you happy, that's wonderful. But you shouldn't feel as though you have to do those things or you're not a woman unless you do those things or you won't make your husband or partner happy if you don't do those things. You should be with someone who loves and respects you and doesn't expect for you to do things for them that they wouldn't do in return. It's like, I think you should both cook each other food. I think you should both do the chores together. I think you should take turns doing things for each other. That's what a partnership is. But also, if you spend the rest of your life alone and you're filled with love and happiness with the people around you, why is that such a bad thing? Like we're so conditioned with this like heteronormative idea of this like nuclear family. And also studies even show that the most important relationships women will have, especially in their 20s, are with other women. Um, not in like an, an intimate way, but I mean like in a friend way or a platonic way. Having that like love and support from people around you who are sharing your same world experience is really important. I don't know, I just think there's so many different ways to live life other than this. And it makes me sad that people are still like stuck in these like old ways of like biblical times. I don't know, the last thing I would ever wanna be is a housewife. I make my own bank and I fill my own tank and he ain't cute unless I down a couple drink. <laughs> Remember that viral rap song? That was a good one. But anyways, I'm pretty sure Caitlyn's probably the breadwinner of this relationship. Just saying. Uh, Caitlyn, that's not exactly what the Bible wanted for you. <laughs> the Bible really said, sit down and shut up, woman. And Caitlyn was really like, la 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 la. Oh, don't be gay? Okay, I'll listen to that. Like, anyways, yeah, this woman is a walking contradiction. And let's go another three months without talking about her. <laughs> This video is probably already long enough. I can cover more. She, she hasn't posted that many videos, but um, if there's a specific video you want me to cover of hers, link it down below or like tell me the title of it or whatever. So I guess that's all for this video. Thank you again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Remember to check the links down below if you want to get that great deal. Also remember to like, comment, and subscribe down below because you know I appreciate that so much. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.